Typhoon Usagi. Yes, Typhoon. And in just the past few hours here on Wednesday evening going into Saturday, this storm just exploded from a severe tropical storm up to what I would not be surprised to be a Category 2 approaching Category 3 Typhoon. Right now being listed as a Category 1, though, by the Japan Meteorological Agency. Winds about 126, gusting up and over 150 kilometers per hour so just a very intense storm system out here continuing to roll off there towards the west starting to get those spiral bands around the center of the storm system and with the eye wall continuing to rapidly develop you can see it really pop up here quite clearly on the visible slash infrared imagery as we go into the night hours well the storm is becoming more and more so very very dangerous one other thing uh if you do do a quick google search and i know some people are going to be doing it for tropical storm usagi or just if you write down usagi you may get either a rabbit or an anime character from the mid 90s for sailor moon so yeah um make sure you type in typhoon or tropical storm usagi when searching for this no problem with odete which is the local name given for this storm in the philippines by bagasa so where is exactly is it going to be going i mean right now we have these Typhoon strength winds are rapidly developing storm system, but no one's really being impacted. There is some waves hitting the coastlines here. Definitely rip currents in northeastern Luzon, even out there towards Okinawa. But where the storm is going to be going is likely directly through the Luzon Strait, given uh, the overall background flow and much of the uh, model output at this time. Southern Taiwan very well could get clipped by it too, but I think the Batanas Islands are going to get the worst of this storm system. Southern Taiwan, you're going to be in the right front quadrant, but the eye wall may very well remain offshore. Still a few days to watch this. That'll be by Friday. We're going into Thursday morning with this update. So actually only about 24 to 48 hours, but I think the Batanas Islands, the worst of it here. But still heavy rainfall and typhoon strength winds along northern portions of Luzon, not to mention that enhanced monsoonal flow, which is going to be wrapping around the western periphery, hitting the metro Manila area, and also that very high threat of flooding there across much of Taiwan. Actually, we just take a look at the next 72 hours of uh, the rainfall accumulation outlook. You can see where the heaviest rainfall is going to be located there along the eastern seaboards of Taiwan. And you see that dramatic drop off. This is a common uh, thing we see in Taiwan. It's because the mountains out here are just so strong. So when those winds wrap around the eastern periphery of this storm system and off there towards the north, it just hits those mountains, squeezes out like a sponge. And you can easily see 500 to 1,000 millimeters of rainfall in some isolated areas here, especially along the southern portions of Taiwan. Remember, we, we've already seen uh, plenty of flooding and landslides already here in 2013 across Taiwan due to tropical systems. But also we have, well, our enhanced monsoonal effect, like I was saying, down there towards southern Luzon and Visayas, that moisture that keeps unwrapping in, and plus across much of Vietnam over towards the Indochina Peninsula, Thailand. Actually, tropical depression advisory is in effect for Thailand because we have a tropical depression here, believe it or not, which uh, moved on shore, already weakened out, but... Uh, it doesn't really need to be a super intense storm system as far as the winds that have a heavy amount of rainfall. And that's what we're going to be seeing out there towards the Indochina Peninsula here throughout the next 72 hours. Now taking a look at the official track from the Japan Meteorological Agency. Like I said, they still have this going through the Luzon Strait south of uh, Taiwan. Batanas Islands, actually the largest population on here on the islands, looks like a direct landfall. Uh, right now, 65 knot winds, but they do expect it to intensify up to about 80, gusting up to 115 knots going through the next 48 hours as it does push by here. Do expect a slight weakening as it pushes south of Taiwan. Main reason, friction from those mountains. Northern periphery is going to get tore apart slightly before it starts to reorganize, pushing out there towards southeastern China. Now, this is a track from JTWC, and I agree more so with their intensity. Right now, they do have a weak end typhoon. By weak, I mean... I mean, it's still pretty strong. It's a typhoon, 65, gusting up to 80 knots, but they do expect it to max out around 105, gusting up to 130 knots, much stronger, about 25 knots stronger than what JMA expects their max intensity just south of Taiwan here, right over to Batanas Island. So, uh, yeah. Up to 10 meter high waves possible out of the storm system as well. The tremendous amount of rainfall. And then you're going to have to contend with these winds out there. So a uh, lot of stuff happening with the storm system. Main threat to the Philippines, though, I think is going to be the heavy rainfall. The risk of flooding and landslides going through the day here on Friday. Then looking ahead, though, out towards Saturday, Sunday, and then eventually by Monday early in the morning, Hong Kong. By, by Monday morning especially, 
Um, yeah, you're going to be looking at the risk of a storm system here. Let's take a look at what the GFS 06Z model run first, and then we'll take a look at the uh, ECMWFs, two of the pretty decent models out here. Now right here, showing you what the uh, GFS is showing at this time, going through Thursday evening. Our Typhoon Jaws pushing off here towards the northwest. Now, I know if you're out here in Apari, actually by Thursday evening, you're going to start to see these uh, tropical storm strength winds come ashore a little bit farther inland, not so much, but the heavy rainfall will already start to push across much of this area. It makes that little turn towards the northwest. Main reason is it started around the western periphery of the high pressure ridge, which is dominating much of the southern Japanese islands at this time. Keeping things actually relatively cooler off here towards the north, but this storm system is not going to want to run into that ridge. But what we'll be doing is starting to round it. And what that means, it's going to stay south of our storm system. So, if, or south of that high pressure, that is. Our storm system will stay south of it. So if we go back to that GFS model, we can see it start to work its way slightly towards the northwest, just pushing over the Patanas Island, southern Taiwan. Uh, you can see some typhoon strength winds out here as well. That's what those areas in the darker purples are indicating. A very well-defined eye here. And this is really about the time JTWC expects those winds gusting up and over 130 knots very intense storm system at that time and then as we go ahead though this is going to look ahead till sunday hong kong's are right in the crosshairs and really uh pushing along the southern periphery of this high pressure ridge jma actually expects a little bit farther towards the northeast but i think hong kong macau and possibly extending out there towards hainan it just depends on how strong that ridge remains in place but these are the areas that are going to be impacted by the storm and possibly a uh, well a fairly decent typhoon at that time as it pushes on shore uh, going to be bringing typhoon strength winds likely across the Hong Kong Macau area by early Monday morning uh, so definitely um, I would start getting prepared out here for this still uh, a few days out I mean we still got uh, about five days before this scenario could un or unfold but let's compare it with the ECMWF model and what we can see is actually a fair agreement now the ECMWF a little bit faster so let's just rewind it just a little bit going into Sunday night a little typhoon right there over Hong Kong Island so um, yeah long range looks like that may be an outcome but it still could waver towards the northeast towards the southwest all depending on that high pressure ridge farther off there towards uh, the north. So yeah, with that said, my cone of air uh, really uh, extend out here towards southern Taiwan. I still think southern Taiwan could get hit by the storm system, but the heavy rain is going to be a major threat. If it does, it's going to dramatically weaken out. If it does not go and it goes straight through Luzon Strait, yeah, across much of the southeastern China, extending out there towards Hainan possibly, uh, you're going to be wanting to watch for a power powerful typhoon. Northern Luzon, you still want to watch this. If it doesn't jog towards the northwest like most of the models are indicating, you could be clipped by it, but I don't think a full on hit in Luzon is possible at this time. I really think many of the outlying islands there in Luzon Strait, that's where you're going to be getting the worst of this storm system. So, yeah, with that said, that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at WesternPacificWeather.com for our coverage on Typhoon. Uh, Usagi here, or, or Det. Um, yeah, it's his third name storm system of the year. So if you have any of those questions, comments, or suggestions on it, please post it down in the comment box below. And as always, stay safe out there.